Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, welcome, this is Dr. Jacobs. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to stop occipital neuralgia pain. But before I do that, I'm gonna go over basic anatomy, symptoms of occipital neuralgia, causes and risk factors, and then we're gonna go over some of the steps that you can do at home to relieve or stop occipital neuralgia pain. So occipital neuralgia, it's basically a headache that usually starts uh, in the base of your skull. And as you can see here in this image, it's usually a compression or a tightness of soft tissue or actually nerve, uh, compression on the nerve that supply the head area uh, with the uh, occipital nerve. As you can see here, usually it's, uh, it's coming from C2, C3 around this area in the spine and in the yellow lines, that's actually the nerve, the occipital nerves that supply the head area. So you might have issue in this area that compressing here and causing kind of radiated pain in the back, in the front, and sometimes it goes all the way to the eye. Um, so typically it's considered a headache and some of the symptoms that you might experience like thrombing, pain, uh, numbness, tingling, electric shock, uh, especially if something really is scar tissue that's compressing on that area. Sometimes you will have a back pain and uh, pain, pain behind your ears, your eyes, in the front and typically it's happened on one side of the head if uh, someone uh, have issue on both sides from poor posture you might have it in both sides because you have tightness and restriction on both sides that compressing on, on the occipital nerve that supply the head here uh, the neck area has a lot of uh, complicated muscles group that supply this area the problem is especially it's common with poor posture you start to have a lot of tightness in those muscles you build a scar tissue and that's when you start to have uh, compression on the occipital nerve and have those issue but what are the causes and risk factor for occipital neuralgia so one of the actually common cause is poor posture, poor body mechanic, especially if the head in the head area. If you slouch in the front of the computer or in front of the TV or in front of your phone, that's a risk factor for having acceptable neuralgia, because technically your neck should be straight line like this, if you have a good posture. But if you're slouching forward, you actually can see it here. I'm extending my neck with that posture. And that actually compressing on the nerve and building a lot of inflammation, a lot of scar tissue, a lot of tightness in this area, that compressing on the nerve. So uh, poor posture is really very common risk factor, prolonged driving, uh, working in the front of computer and actually not maintaining a proper good posture. And I go over the proper posture in other video. Feel free to check it in, uh, in my channel. The other risk factor is whiplash from accidents, more trivial accident that you strain this area. So your body builds scar tissue, fascia restrictions, and you start to have uh, uh, tightness that on the nerve, that compression on the nerve and cause that radiculopathy pain. So compression of the nerve ending or root uh, C2, C3, herniated disc around that area. Also, it's a risk factor as if you have osteoarthritis in the neck area, strain in the neck muscles, and if someone has gout di or diabetic or have infection, that's actually a risk factor to have uh, occipital neuralgia issue. So I want you to really uh, look at this image. This is very important because it's extremely overlooked structures in the head and the neck area. You see that white area, that's a gilia apparatica, that's a fascia area. So a lot of the time, there is a lot of tightness in the fascia here and the occipitalis muscles that in, uh, in the 
and above the base of your head that actually could have a lot of scar tissue compressing on the nerve that going up so you could have the compression in here you could have the compression in here so it could be any area on those nerve uh, um, uh, lines that actually cause the symptoms so uh, we need to really pay attention to this structure because that's what we actually gonna work on to really uh, address the root cause of the problem but going back to the importance of posture before the treatment and after the treatment because it's extremely one of the most common risk factor for occipital neuralgia so when you look in this image when you neck in neutral position like my neck now you see is you your neck in zero degree your your head weigh 10 to 15 to 12 pounds but if you slouch forward like in the far right here image and reading on your phone the weight of your head is 60 pounds if you do that 15 minutes you're gonna strain your occipital muscles around this area you're gonna strain your neck muscles you're gonna cause a lot of inflammation in this area a lot and you're gonna strain the muscles and that will uh, your body gonna build a scar tissue a lot of trigger points and that's gonna compress on the occipital nerve that is extremely risk factor and if you treat yourself and you don't correct your posture there is no way you're going to get to the root cause of the problem so you have to work on the posture plus you have to release all the tightness in the neck area so how we treat it properly in order to do that we need to understand the normal healing cycle because when we know how our body heal that will be easy to get to the root cause of the problem and instead of wasting our time in the treatment that actually is just masking the symptoms so our body has to go through three stages in on healing and i gonna just gonna go over uh, external paper cut here for visualization but the same process happened here in the neck area but we don't see it because this can cover it so the first stage of healing as you see in the first image here is inflammation swelling redness the blood start to rush to that area as you can see in that image second stage of healing is the proliferation stage during this stage there is actually a cascade of events like scar tissue fascia restrictions muscle spasm and trigger points this is part of healing last stage of healing is a maturation stage and actually that's when the body gets rid of the scar tissue the fascia restrictions the muscle spasm and everything clears up as you see in the last image so why it's important that your body go through those stages because if you for example strain your neck muscles and your body has not built the scar tissue that is that strain will never heal so the scar tissue it's like the glue that keep things uh, together so it's a very important to have a scar tissue the problem is when you have a lot of scar tissue that compressing on the nerve that will cause uh, uh, pressure on the nerve and the symptoms that you experience from the occipital neuralgia so perfect scenario your body should get rid of it but when you do the bad habit on a daily basis like slouching forward and not having a good posture that is like daily trauma to that area daily buildup of scar tissue so we have to correct the bad mechanic bad posture and also we have to really break down those adhesion that happen in the proliferation stage and if you have inflammation we have to work on that simultaneously to get to maturation stage so if you are in chronic condition it's very common that your body going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation and at this point we have to address this uh, healing cycle from both end the inflammation and proliferation so I'm gonna go over a common treatment that been used to treat occipital neuralgia but it's not effective and it will make a lot of sense why this treatment is not effective when we look at the normal healing cycle so the most common things that have been used in physical therapy when a lot of healthcare providers use it in their clinic is heat uh, ice stem so um, 
IS is temporarily decreasing inflammation, but when we look at the healing cycle here, ice and stem or heat will not break scar tissue, will not release fascia restrictions. It's not going to do much here for the inflammation state, for the proliferation stage, and not much for the inflammation. And based on the studies, ice and heat and stem electrical stimulation, they provide temporary pain relief. If you're lucky, you might get half an hour of temporary pain relief, but it's not really get to the root cause of the problem. The other things that commonly use and I will combine together is foam roller and massage. Think about this way. If you are in inflammation stage and you already have inflamed area here, which is there is a swelling and compression on the nerve with the inflammation. If you use foam roller, you're going to inflame it actually more. So if you have open wound and you keep rubbing, rubbing on that open wound, you're going to actually inflame it more. So uh, massage and foam roller actually could aggravate the symptoms of inflammation. And when I go over the anatomy of fascia and scar tissue, it will make a lot of sense why massage and foam roller actually not going to really break your scar tissue, not going to release fascia restrictions. And it's mechanically impossible to go deep to release deep adhesion, and I will go over that in the next few slides. But overall, based on the studies, foam roller and massage, if you're lucky, you might get temporary pain relief. But in general, the, do not provide long-term pain relief. And it will make a lot of sense when we go over uh, the anatomy of the scar tissue and the fascia system. One of the other things that usually commonly used is a stretching. And I personally do not recommend it to my patient because based on the studies, actually stretching does not provide long-term pain reduction. And overstretch actually could cause more inflammation. Think about this way. You strain your neck muscle because you have um, poor posture. So if you have a micro tear in the muscle, and you keep stretching it, you're going to tear it more. So stretching actually could cause more harm than benefit. And I personally recommend the other alternative option than stretching that's actually safer than stretching. So the other thing that actually commonly use is strength exercises. But if you have inflamed area and you strengthen it, you're going to inflame it more. And instead of doing strength exercises, I personally give my patient function training, correct their posture, and that's more effective than strengthening exercises. So how to treat the root cause of the problem? So when you think ac about acceptable neuralgia or any disease in general, if we look at the normal healing cycle, we need to actually identify, are you stuck in the inflammation proliferation stage, which is actually the chronic condition like here, or you purely stuck in the proliferation stage? So the length of the time and the intensity of the pain is a sign of how bad is your condition. So I personally try to work on inflammation if there is a lot of inflammation. What you can do first, initially, you can rest. You need to correct your posture. You need to avoid the actual activity that aggravate your symptoms, the ones that I listed in the causes and risk factors. The other thing I do for inflammation, I use a magna heal. This is very strong magnet that can be used on the neck area and um, the range of the magnetic field is around three inches so it can penetrate three inches in the body to decrease inflammation so that's what i do for inflammation the other thing i put all my patient on anti-inflammatory diet to make sure they not eating food that cause internal inflammation and slow the normal healing cycle internally if you have chronic condition like gout, diabetic, or other health issue, I recommend take advantage of Ask Aster. It's a free online medical e evaluation that actually takes about five minutes to answer the questionnaire. And the software will help you to know if you have possible vitamins, mineral deficiency that actually slow down your healing. Because you, know, you need those vitamins and minerals for your body to transition from inflammation stage, proliferation stage to maturation stage. So if you have chronic condition with other health issue, I recommend to take advantage of Ask Aster. It's askaster.com just to make sure your body in a good healthy state for healing. So the other thing we have to work on simultaneously, especially if you are in chronic condition that your body going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation is 
to work on the proliferation stage. So the way I divide it, I work first initially on the scar tissue because it's part of healing. And I will show you in this image, your tissue normally should look like this, your muscles, if you don't have any injury, the image on the far left. And when you start to have injury or tear, you start to have micro tear here in the muscle. That's what look like. Your body has to build a scar tissue for this area to heal. Otherwise, it's permanent tear and it will never gonna heal. The problem is if your body build excessive scar tissue like what happened here in the third image here, all of these in the way of your muscles because your muscles should act like a rubber band when it contract and relax should it stretch like this when you have scar tissue in your muscle it's like you have a knot in a rubber band so when your muscle stretch will not uh, stretch much because that knot will decrease the range of motion and that's what happened with a lot of occipital neuralgia a lot of scar tissue in that area that prevent full lengthening of the muscle and the tissue and that compress on the occipital nerve it's kind of suffocating the nerve so you start to have those thrombing or electric shock pain that go into the head because that nod it's like a rock compression on that nerve that's a very important part of the treatment so occipital neuralgia you may be stuck in the proliferation stage which a lot of scar tissue a lot of tightness or your body going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation, and we have to work on that simultaneously. So what I personally use for a scar tissue, I use the A3 tool to break a superficial scar tissue. It's very easy to use, and we do that in relationship to the inflammation, and I go over that in detail for the patient self-treatment program, how to distinguish and when to use the tool in relationship to inflammation and proliferation. The other thing I use, and that's what I said, uh, massage and foam roller uh, are not effective to break a scar tissue because uh, what we learn in the school to use like a elbow or the knuckle to really go deep to break deep a scar tissue in the muscle or in the soft tissue but mechanically impossible with the knuckle and the elbow to go deep to really do deep release that's why actually massage and foam roll are not effective because you're barely touching the surface of the body and that's why I invented the A5 and I use that to break deep scar tissue release deep fascia restriction and trigger point and and the a5 uh, tool can go deep in the body two two inches and a half uh, so it can cause a uh, deep release and remember for scar tissue for fascia restriction if you do not have mechanical force on the restricted tissue it's impossible to release it why think about this way if you have a motor and you need to unscrew a screw inside the motor and you have a short screwdriver it's impossible to really unscrew it because it's the screwdriver is very short and that's exactly what happened with the hand with the knuckle with the elbow or foam roller you're not gonna go deep enough to the restricted area so your screwdriver is very short so impossible to cause physiological change in the deep tissue unless you really have the tool to go deep uh, in the tissue so the other thing that's extremely overlooked and uh, I'm gonna go over some uh, like briefly on the fascia system in this uh, video to appreciate the complexity of the fascia system because it's an extremely important part of the treatment and it's overlooked by a lot of healthcare providers so the fascia system, uh, it's uh, the superficial fascia layer, it's like a wraps around the entire body. It's like a Spider-Man suit, very thin layer under the skin wrapping the entire body. And you can see here in this image, the fascia is like the white web tissue here and here and in here. And as I mentioned to you, the gilia apparatica, this is actually apparatic fascia this is a fascia layer that wrapping the head this area so when you have a knee restriction scar tissue in the fascia layer that gonna compress on everything underneath it and you might have occipital neuralgia plus tension headache plus plus uh, other 
issues because everything is tight in the head area. So to make things complicated, but don't worry, the treatment is extremely simple is the fascia layer we have several layers so our body divided to two big categories of fascia superficial layer wrapping the entire body and we have the deep layer the deep layer is actually divided to four subcategories and you can see it here the apparatic fascia it's wrapping a group of muscle epimyosin wrapping uh, individual muscle and then you have the premyosin that wrapping bundle of fibers and the endomyosin wrapping each individual fiber and why i'm going over this because it's extremely important system and if we don't address all these layers of the fascia, it's basically you're not treating the whole system. You're just picking and choose layers and avoiding the other layers. And it's extremely more common to have issue in the deeper area than the superficial layer. So to make things more complicated, each of these layers have one to two subcategories on the top of each other. And that's make it more complicated, but don't worry, the treatment is very simple. So to visualize it, you have the apparatic fascia layer wrapping a group of muscle, and then you have the epimyosin here, wrapping the whole muscle. Then the premyosin uh, wrapping a bundle of fibers. And then at the end, the endomyosin wrapping each individual fiber that's why it's impossible for massage for foam roller to really go deep to release the epimycin premycin and endomycin so how to treat that so what i personally use i use the e1 tool to really release the superficial fascia layer and the apparatic fascia layer and i personally use it on my head like if i slept wrong one time and I just wake up and I get my tools and release it before it ending up with really uh, acceptable neuralgia symptoms. Then I use the A5 to release the premycin, uh, premycin, epimycin, endomycin. So this way we work on all the fascia system. So to sum it up, what you should do at home. First of all, you really need to work on your posture. Poor posture is one of the major risk factors for have occipital neuralgia. You slouch forward, you're reading, your head is 60 degrees like this, you're watching TV or your phone slouching forward, your head weighs 60 pounds. And that 60 pounds of pulling on uh, those muscles, that cannot handle it. Those muscles not build up to carry that weight for hours while you're maintaining that poor posture we have you have to really correct your posture but here is the thing and that's common misperception and uh, with a lot of healthcare provider let's correct the posture and that's will relieve the occipital neuralgia that's not correct because if you have a scar tissue and then you have tightness and um, I ask you to correct your posture, you will not be able to correct it because that tightness, that scar tissue actually pulling you down and it's like your rubber band is not stretchable because that's not, it's preventing full range of motion. So what I personally do is we have to break the adhesion, we have to break the scar tissue, the fascia restriction, release all the tightness then do the posture training to correct your posture. So this way it will be easy to maintain proper posture because if we don't do that, the feedback I get from my patient, it's hard to maintain good posture. Of course it will be hard because the mechanically you will not be able to maintain that because you're pulling a rubber band that's actually not stretchable because of the tightness. So it's important to to do proper posture, core stabilization, but we cannot do that initially. We have to do the release, release the scar tissue, the trigger point, the fascia restriction, and then immediately what I personally do is correct the posture. It will be easy for you to do it afterward. So you need to be stay active, move around. Do not maintain poor posture for very long time or correct your ergonomic while you sitting in the front of the computer or TV and I have other uh, videos 
going over the proper posture and body mechanics. Neck exercises, make sure you do it pain free. And I usually do that only after the release because your muscles are nice and loose, so you can do the exercises. But if you have tightness and you're slouching forward here, and I ask you to do the exercises, that's a poor position for exercising. That will actually make your symptoms worse. So we have to do the correction, then we do the exercises and the treatment. So if you stuck in the proliferation stage, it's usually very easy with the tools, just release everything, correct the posture. Typically patient respond very well with that. But if someone has a chronic inflammation, that uh, their body going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation, we have to address inflammation and proliferation simultaneously. So, and that's conclude the video on how to treat the root cause of occipital neuralgia. If you have any question or comment, leave it in the comment section below and I will answer it in a future video. We'll see you soon. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below or go to asterinstitute.com.